I'm Minister Mark Allen, and welcome to FHL for the Life of Potter Word Fellowship. Today I'm just going to uh, talk about the purpose of a church and go over a few things. Uh, first, we have to understand, uh, in order for the church to fulfill its purpose, the Holy Spirit must be present. I'm going to start off with a prayer. Father God, we just uh, thank you, and we ask that you open up our, our minds to your word. In your son Jesus' name, amen. So the uh, first thing we need to understand about the church is uh, the church should equip people with the word of God. Churches are supposed to equip us with the word. Uh, you know, this, this means that when we come into the church, we're supposed to be able to get everything we need to, uh, to, 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 to survive spiritual warfare. Because the, uh, the key to surviving spiritual warfare is the Holy Spirit and the word. And if we don't have the Holy Spirit uh, and the Word, we won't be able to survive spiritual warfare. We won't be able to uh, stand up to the attacks of Satan. And, uh, you know, the church's main focus should be Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the Word. So uh, we have to, to be equipped with the Word. We first have to have the Word. The church's main focus should be Jesus Christ. His teachings, his lifestyle, and giving us uh, understanding of, of Jesus Christ's lifestyle and what he taught. So Christ has to be the main focus. Because um, remember, it's only after we accept Jesus Christ in our heart that we can even receive the Holy Spirit. And it's only with the Holy Spirit that we can fight and stand up to sin. So Jesus Christ has to be the main focus. The church is supposed to be a place where people can experience the love of Jesus Christ and learn about the Word of God. So that that is a two that right there is two it's two things that happens in a church. You know, Christians make up the church, the church members. That's 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 the Christians, the church members. And and all Christians are responsible for spreading the love of God and the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, now in a church, uh, the Christian members are responsible for showing people to come to the church the love of God. That, that's our job and, and as Christian members. We have to love people, show them the love of God. And then uh, the job of the pastor is to give the word of God, give the scripture. Now, when people come to your church, they're gonna, they're, they're gonna, they need to experience those two things. They need to experience the love of God, which comes from the church members, and then they need to experience the word of God which comes from the pastor. You know, when you're a part of the church, you're either helping it grow or you're tearing it apart. So the church members have to understand their role in the church for the church to operate and work. All Christians are called to do a, a basic, basic things. We're called to follow Jesus Christ, love God, love people, and spread the word of God and the salvation of Jesus Christ to people. That, that's the Great Commission. To, to make disciples of all nations and all Christians are. That's what, that's what you're supposed to be doing if you're a Christian. And then if you're in a church, you're supposed to be doing the same thing. Except for in a church, the church member, there are people that you're specifically there for you. To still love them and give them the love, the love of God and, uh, and make them disciples. And, and the people uh, the people who come into the church, if they don't feel the love of God in your church, they're not going to come back. And then they're not going to be open to the word. If they don't feel the love of God in your church, they will not be open to the word of your pastor. You know, the, the, uh, the purpose of these people coming to church, we come to church, we, we, we uh, come to church, and the word of God, will uh, the power of the word will bring us to repentance to accept Jesus Christ. If, if we're not already accepting him. If we have already accepted Jesus Christ, then we're going to come to church to learn the word so we can apply it to our lives and grow. Sure. Yeah. Now, uh, at church, people should be able to learn scriptures and, uh, and learn how to apply the word to their life. You know, we uh, scriptures, that's, that's going to come from uh, the reading of the word and it's going to come from the pastor preaching. And then, Applying the word. That the pastor has to be able to, to teach the people how to apply the word of God to their life. 
Because we want the word of God won't do us any good if we're not actually using it. And at a church, uh, whether it's in a Bible study throughout the week or some type of Bible class or or if it's a, doing a teaching, doing a sermon, it, whatever time you're, you should be able to learn how to apply the word in, in, to your life so you can use it to help you. A church should help people spiritually grow and, and, and mature in Christ. So, you know, so we can fight, fight, and fight. If, uh, if, you're, if you're going to church and you're not growing in Christ, something is wrong. Now, it could be uh, your own personal walk. Maybe you're not doing some things that you should be doing. And then, it, and then some part of it is going to fall on the church responsibility to help you spiritually grow and mature. To make sure that you everything is in place. So we have to have everything in place in the church. The foundation, and that's what, and once we go back to the foundation, which has to be Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus Christ said out of his own mouth that the, the foundation has to be him. That, that's what makes it work. So the church's foundation has to be him. That's what makes it work. And for you to mature and, to mature and grow in Christ, the foundation has to be Christ at that church. You know, the church should be bringing people to Christ by interacting with them and showing people the love of God. Bringing people to Christ. Now, this is, a, once again, the church members. Uh, how, how, are they, how are the church members outside of church? Mm -hmm. uh, Monday through Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're not in church Sunday or when you're not in church Saturday, whichever day you go, how are you towards people? Uh, your, the attitude you show towards those people is supposed to bring them to your church, bring them to Christ. Bring them, they should want to come visit your church by your attitude towards them. If your attitude is not correct, you're not going to bring people to Christ. You know, people don't understand that the church is judged uh, by all members of the church are judged by one member in the church. If one member turns off somebody outside of the church, that's it for that church. To that member, to the person that got turned off, they're not going to go to that church. They're just going to say, no, I ain't going there. Even if that one member might not represent no, no one else in the church, it don't matter. We're all a part of the same body. So if one member turns off somebody outside of your church, your church is going to end up with a bad name. People are not going to want to come to that. We have to understand that when you're a part of a church family, you represent that church family. Church should be using scripture to encourage people to grow in Christ and supporting them with the love of God. Now, when you use scripture to, to encourage somebody, that means you're going to tell them something, then you're going to go to the Bible, you're going to show them the scripture that backs up what you're telling them, and then you're going to tell them how they can apply that scripture to their situation. That's encouragement through the word. And when you do that, you have to do it out of love. You can't do it being judgmental. You can't do it talking down on their lifestyle or anything. You have to give them that scripture and that encouragement out of love. Remember, it's the love of Christ on the inside of us that draws people in. That love draws people in. The church has to have it. The members in the church, we have to have the love of Christ. Or else it won't work. The church has to be a house of healing, deliverance, you know, for people who are sick. Mentally, physically, emotionally as well as spiritually. So what does this mean? If somebody comes to your church and they're sick, and it doesn't matter what their sickness is, but when they come to your church, they should receive prayer, they should receive encouragement, they should receive help. Amen. If they're sick mentally, they should receive prayer, encouragement, help. If they're sick physically, they should receive prayer, encouragement, help. If they're sick emotionally, prayer, encouragement, help. They have to receive the word. If they're sick spiritually, then the word will comfort them if the word is done within the Holy Spirit. And the power of God is there. The word will comfort a spiritually sick person. Because the Holy Spirit is, is the, the Holy Spirit outshines any other spirit. So if a person is spiritually sick, fighting some type of a, a demon or something like that, and they hear the word of God with the power of the Holy Spirit, the word will comfort them. If they're fighting addiction, the church should be able to help. Not talk down on them, not, not just gossip about them and say this person is this addicted to this outside of here. No, that's not why they came to church. They didn't come to church so we could talk about them. 
in their addiction. They came to church so we could help them defeat their addiction, so we can help them beat them. They didn't come. They already know they're addicted. And they know that we know them. So they come to the church to help for help. And we have to help them. If we're not going to help them uh, defeat their addiction, we're not doing anything. We have to always keep this. The number one important thing for a church is the Holy Spirit. And the only way the Holy Spirit is going to be present is if the foundation is Jesus Christ. There, there will be a time where the church has to repent. Churches nowadays, they don't want to repent. But the church has to repent. If there is unrepentant sin in the church, the church won't have the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't dwell in a sinful temple. You remember in the Old Testament, uh, you know, when those soldiers went down and they stole from the, they stole from the camp and they had the wrong thing, uh, it was said that we have to get the sin out of the camp. That it messed up everything. They wouldn't have won another battle until they repented and got the sin out of the camp. Today, churches have to do the same thing. We have to get sin out of the church. It doesn't matter who it is, if you're hurting somebody's feelings or what, we have to get the sin out of the church. We have to ask ourselves the questions. Is your church a place where you are learning how to apply the word of God? You know, the church should be a house of prayer, praise, and worship. Is your church a house of prayer, praise, and worship? We're not talking about fake worship or just singing a song and people with talent and voices. We're talking about a worship where people are being intimate with God, where people are, are, are crying their hearts out to the Lord, not worried about the person next to them, not worried about anything else, just worried about where they are with God. We're concerned about pouring their heart, opening their heart to God. Prayer. A, a house of prayer. Remember what Jesus Christ said. He said, you ought to turn my church to a den of thieves. The church is supposed to be a house of prayer. We have to get back to the house of prayer. You know, ask yourself the question, are you maturing in Christ at your church? Are you growing spiritually at your church? Is your church preparing you for spiritual warfare? And when you leave your church, are you ready for the attack of Satan? Are you going to stand up to what's going on in your life? You know, is the main focus of your church Jesus Christ? Does your church worship in truth and in spirit? We Churches today are not worshiping in the truth and spirit. The people who are even over the worship are living in sin. So that right there is already canceled out the Holy Spirit. If your worship leader and the people leading your worship are living lifestyles against God and living in sin, the Holy Spirit is not going to be present in your church. Even if the pastor preaches with the, all the power in the world of the Holy Spirit, it still won't be there because the worship wasn't correct. That's why you have to get the sin out. You know, it doesn't work to where, if, 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 it doesn't work to say, if your pastor is living in sin, then your whole church is going to be off track. Even if everybody else in the church is not living in sin. And if your choir, your worship, and everybody else is living in sin, the church is still going to be off track, even if the pastor is not living in sin. Everything has to work together for the things to work. You know, the Bible says where two or three are gathered on one accord in the spirit, things will work. Things will get done. So that should let you know that if, if 50 of us and things are not getting done, that something is wrong. That means we're not on one accord. We're not in the same spirit. And the Holy Spirit we're supposed to be in is the Holy Spirit. That's it. That's the only spirit that matters. So I just want to end with us realizing what is the purpose of the church. And just remember, the Holy Spirit must be present in your church. The foundation must be Jesus Christ. The focus must be Jesus Christ. Christians must love people, must love God must show the visitors in the church the love of God. We have to show each other the love of God. Everything has to work together. We have to target sin and keep it out of the church. That don't mean we single out everybody. It means that we target sin. We preach against sin. We speak against sin. 
If we see one of our sisters and brothers falling, we help them in the, within the word, encourage them. We don't let them continue to go on in sin. We, we, we grab them, we put them back with the love of God. Not, be, not because we think that we're better than them, but because we love them. And we want to succeed and be productive in Christ. Churches today have all kinds of stuff. Cafeterias, cafes, stores, gyms, living rooms, dining rooms, all kinds of social areas. But the only question is, do they have the Holy Spirit and do they have the power of God? Because it doesn't matter about everything else. We need the Holy Spirit and the power of God. So, Father God, I just thank you for this word, and I ask that you start bringing the churches together so we can function together and operate in the Holy Spirit and produce the fruit. In your son Jesus' name, amen.